guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Suchita Verma and today I'm going to discuss about air sterilization in fermentation process. Let's get started. Now, the industrial fermentations, they are basically carried out under, you know, vigorous aeration conditions. So, air is an important factor for a successful fermentation process and this air has to be sterile and free from any microbial load and any contamination, right? So now, what is air actually contains? Air contains suspended particles and microorganisms. But when this air is being, you know, used for a fermentation process, in that case, we only need a sterile air, free of contamination and free of microorganisms. So there are a number of methods which are actually available that we can use to get a sterile air. One very important method is heat. Another important method is filtration. Then UV radiation and gas scrubbing. Now UV radiation is also used, but most of the commonly used methods are either filtration or heat. So in earlier days, we used to use heat for uh, sterilizing air. But what happened is that because this is a very expensive process, hence we do not use it nowadays. Nowadays, we prefer going for filtration method, right? So in case of heat, if I discuss about heat, sterilization of air then in that case the air was being subjected it was being carried over the electrically heated coils electrically heated elements and then uh, this is how the air used to get sterilized but now we use different kinds of filters for sterilization of air so i'm going to discuss about the heat in batch sterilization process what happens is that the sterilization takes place in batches right chote chote batches so sterilization ke liye usually the temperature that is being recommended is 121 degree Celsius, right? Is temperature pay batches may when the sterilization occurs, what happens is that there are two kinds of two methods through which we can sterilize the air. One method is direct. What we do here is that we directly inject the steam. We directly inject the steam in this direct method. In case of indirect method, the air is being passed, the steam is being passed through the internal coils. There are coils internally present and through these coils, the steam is being passed and the sterilization process occurs. So these are two methods, but there are few disadvantages because of this batch sterilization. One thing is that the batch sterilization is actually very expensive. Why is it so? The reason is that because it occurs in batches, what happens is to attain the temperature at 121 degrees Celsius, it takes about two to four hours to attain that particular temperature of the bioreactor. Once the temperature is being attained, then it starts the actual sterilization cycle and this cycle continues about 60 minutes like approximately one hour right so you consider the time two to four hours for the attainment of the actual temperature that is 121 degrees celsius then another hour for the actual sterilization cycle and then once the sterilization cycle is over then it, the coil needs to be cooled off also na? so the cooling time is another one to two hours. So during that particular time, when this sterilization process occurs in different batches, it actually leads to a lot of cost. Uh, you know, it, it's very cost effective. It's, it's very uh, expensive. It actually leads to cost buildup, right? So this is one disadvantage of sterilizing in batches. Another disadvantage is that a lot of media damage occurs. How the media damage occurs is one thing is that there might be alteration in the nutrients. The nutrients might get altered, right? Next thing is that there might be pH change, right? There might be pH change and then there might also be discoloration of the media so these are the few disadvantages that are being associated with patch sterilization cycle right by itself now i'm going to talk about continuous 
the sterilization. So now because in batch sterilization, there is a lot of time required to speed up the process, to heat, to attain a particular temperature of 121 degree Celsius. And then the sterilization cycle is also very long, then it takes time for the cooling. The overall energy consumption is very much high. But this is not in the case of continuous sterilization, right? So I'm going to talk about continuous sterilization where the temperature for a sterilization used is 140 degrees Celsius. And the time required for the sterilization process is just 30 seconds to 120 seconds. Look at the difference where batch sterilization occurs for like, you know, approximately an hour. The cycle is the sterilization cycle continues for an hour. Here in case of continuous sterilization, it is only for like two minutes, right? And what is the basic principle that the examiner might ask you in the exam that what is the basic principle of continuous sterilization? The principle behind this sterilization is that whenever we need to kill the microorganism, the more the temperature, the lesser the time is required to kill that particular organism, right? So to kill a microorganism, higher the temperature, lesser the time required, right? So there are two ways of continuously sterilizing is one way is either we can directly give the steam, we can directly give the steam or the next way is that we can use heat exchangers. Basically, there are three heat exchangers that are used in this uh, continuous sterilization. First heat exchanger, what it does is it actually raises the temperature from between 90 to 120 degrees Celsius and it, it goes for 30 seconds. The time is 30 seconds. When the temperature is reached at 120 degrees Celsius, then the next heat exchanger works and it further raises the temperature to 140 degrees Celsius. Now this goes up for 60 to 120 degree seconds. After this, the sterilization cycle is complete and then comes a third heat exchanger and this is used for the cooling purpose, right? So now the temperature will again come down to the normal level and this occurs for 30 seconds, right? So this is about the continuous sterilization, but it has its own pros and cons. One advantage of this continuous sterilization is that 80 to 90 percent of the energy is being conserved over here because now there are no batches and the time required for the sterilization cycle is very, very low as compared to uh, the batch sterilization. So this is one advantage. It saves a lot of energy, right? But the cons, if we talk about the disadvantage, then there is one limitation that because of this much fluctuation of, you know, uh, heating and then instant cooling, because of the fluctuation in the temperature, there are few components which actually gets precipitated, like calcium oxalate. Okay, calcium will precipitate as calcium, uh, calcium will precipitate as calcium oxalate. 